Hi there, welcome to a, another video from GIS Coordinator Limited. What we're going to be talking about today is using uh, QGIS to create a polygon around these points that you see on the map at the moment. Uh, and effectively it'll be a concave polygon and we'll use default QGIS tools. Uh, so th these points are actually drive time points, they're node points on a, on a topological network. Uh, and PG routing is used to create the, the, the dots, create the nodes, and the uh, map, bank, map background data, as you can see, is Orbis. And in fact, to make the colors stand out more, we could flip, switch to black and white, to the grayscale. Um, but I'll, I think I'll leave it on color for the moment. So when it, when I click on any of these points I get a cost value. So that's red, that's greater than 40 minutes. Um, so the furthest away from the drive time sort of center uh, it goes it goes red. So the nearer distances are green. I've got a little legend down here, close, medium, far, which is just a rough sort of far is greater than 40 minutes, that sort of thing, drive. Um, and it's really um, so I've generated these points so we can see uh, concave tool in action, concave uh, hull, as they call it in the list. So typically, if, if you used a, a convex hull, you would get a sort of, and here's one I created earlier, you get a rubber band sort of effect. So it's like a rubber band's been stretched over the entire data set all around it. So you end up with uh, this sort of all-encompassing polygon. And that, that that really isn't uh, good enough for the application I want. I'd like a more more accurate representation of, of, of these dots as a polygon. Uh, so in order to do that, these sort of borders, these edges are going to have to sort of cut in with an interior angle. Uh, and that, that would be a concave um, hull uh, rather than a convex one. So the convex one just has these exterior sort of edges. There's no interior. It doesn't go off at an angle. So that's the that, that that's the difference. So how do we do it? QGIS. Uh, I'll I'll um, leave the convex hull on for a second so you can uh, see it. So in the processing toolbox, um, just go to processing and toolbox. If you don't see it, Control Alt T is the uh, fast uh, hotkeys, uh, shortcut keys. So in here I'll just type con cave and it actually knows recently used it so I'll double click so by default it comes up with a 0.3 uh, threshold value um, where one is equivalent with convex hull so we're going to move away from one really and we're, we're going to do a bit of trial and error to to, to get the sort of best looking uh, polygon which is acceptable for the application that I, I, I want uh, the data f for so we'll leave it at that just to see what it what happens. If if you let it do holes, if there are big big ish gaps in in the data, maybe like for there, just in that one, um, it uh, could easily actually create a hole. I don't want any hole in in these in the, in the polygon I generate. I just want a single entity. So for the purposes um, of uh, this uh, test run first, I will call it uh, drive time concave 03 and this is a temporary file name it's a temporary name that will go in the legend and it's going to go on uh, uh, at this 0.3 default threshold so I'll do run in background it's 64 bit uh, this QGIS that I'm using and I'm actually on uh, 303 which I literally have just downloaded so I'm on 303 the point being that it's I can carry on using QGIS as it does what it says run in the background. As you can see the process is now finished um, and I uh, uh, can see that in the layers list concave hull has been added. Let's just close that for a moment and we can see it on top of the convex hull so it's actually done a pretty good job of trimming the polygon down. But let's just uh, let's turn off the convex one for a moment. Just 
drag the points on top. So we can see uh, how it's sort of gone in and tightened up around the all the points. I think it can uh, do do a bit better than that uh, by altering the, uh, the, the the threshold value. So it is a case of uh, a bit of trial and error, uh, knowing your data and, and really knowing just what sort of uh, level of uh, accuracy uh, and indeed visualization that you want at the end of the day. So it's it's the very much you know what you want out of this that should drive that that threshold figure. Uh, as I hover over here in a convex hole, you can see it's called drive time concave O3 uh, down there in the bottom left. That's what I called it. Um, but if I can't remember what I did last, I can go to processing history. As uh, just some algorithms I've been running. So I can click on the top one, and there indeed is the 0.3 threshold. A double click would 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 uh, re-execute uh, these. Any errors, etc., as well appear in this this history box. It's uh, very very useful. It's a bit like the geoprocessing results uh, window in in Arc ArcGIS. So if I go back to concave hull, and I will set this much tighter to 0 0.1. Again, no holes, and I'll call it dry time concave 01 this time. So I'm really, really tightening that threshold figure. It's going to be, you know, we're moving further away from the whole convex uh, hull generation algorithm. Uh, and I will open the file after, and I'll again run in background, and just fast forward to completion. So you can see it's uh, now finished that process where I set the threshold to 0 0.1 and it's already looking very tight around my points as you can see. Uh, I'll just close the tool window for a moment. So that was the one before, that's the one we just generated with 0 0.1 so it's turned off the one underneath. So I'm pretty pretty happy with that one actually, That that's, that's uh, a good tight fit as far as I'm concerned. I'll turn off the point there I'll just set the symbology um, actually I'll leave the color but I'll make it a bit transparent so we can see the, the map underneath so there's my polygon uh, using the concave hull tool it takes the data and the structure uh, from the first record from the points so it's got this structure it was, it was feature ID record one and it took whatever data, but of course you can easily go into properties, go to the source fields, go to edit, and then add fields, remove fields, remove them, uh, do, do whatever really. And of course in the actual attribution table, type in anything uh, that you want there. So all, all the editing features, you can see the edit symbol there, which I can uh, turn off. And that's gone now. So you can, you can change that construction uh, the, the uh, structure of the table um, easily enough that uh, is storing the polygon and indeed when I hover over it it is called uh, drive time concave 01 uh, and it's an internal package but I can uh, I could have I could, I could have changed whatever um, projection I wanted set the EPSG as normal and indeed uh, rename it so I could call it drive time So, so there we go. Um, I hope you uh, found that, that useful and there'll be a lot more in this uh, uh, series, uh, n not just with QGIS but with other uh, GIS desktops as well. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you do have any questions or would like to know more about the Orbis uh, data product, then please do get in contact with us. Thank you.